Hello, my name is Michael Vanderswag and I live just north of Riverton, Manitoba, which is about two hours north of the city of Winnipeg. I was privileged to attend the National Christian Youth Summit in May of 2019, and I hope to be able to attend again and bring people with me when we can have this event once again in person. At the National Christian Youth Summit, I was filled with awe and my eyes were open more to issues or topics I quickly realized I knew little about. The persecuted church was one big example for me. I was privileged to attend multiple events throughout the summit, including the National Prayer Breakfast, the Leadership Dinner, and I was able to pray and seek God with fellow believers on the hill as we gathered from various parts of Canada. I was able to hear testimonies of various government personnel share how their faith impacts their role in government, and I was encouraged and challenged through this. I left Ottawa feeling very encouraged in my faith and considered it a rewarding experience to be able to take this event in with fellow Christians from across our great nation. Hi, my name is Alicia and I'm from Ottawa and I'm also one of the students who went to the National Christian Youth Summit and I went there for two years so you know it's really good if you go back twice, you know. Um, but unfortunately we couldn't go this year because of COVID but God is still good and I think in this experience I actually really learned a lot. I remember in the first year that I went that uh, one of the apologists from the Ravi Zacharias Ministries talked about for such a time as this and being called being the esters of this generation and that really just spoke to me and that message always just remained with me even now and another thing that I learned at the summit was that there are actually strong believers in the parliament because I didn't think that before I didn't think that anyone was in there or at least uh, the amount that there was and we got a chance not only to find out that there was but to really talk with them hear their hearts hear their stories where they're coming from and to know that there are people who are faithfully praying for the government for our country for our leader is just amazing and to be able to be a part of that well god is good and it, it was just an honor welcome to this year's version of the national christian youth summit bienvenue au Sommet National des Jeunes Chrétiens. We are so excited to have you here um, for this year's event. Even though it is not in person and it's virtual, still we're glad you get to take in this pre-recorded session um, where you'll hear from parliamentarians, our speakers, and you'll even get to tour the lovely city of Ottawa. So without further ado, here are your parliamentarians. Thank you to each of you for choosing to attend the 2021 National Christian Youth Summit. As chair of the National Prayer Breakfast, your presence here means so much to me and my fellow parliamentarians. And as well, those who serve alongside of us in our offices, seeking to honor Christ in the political sphere. As you take in this summit, you'll find that many of my colleagues and staffers are not much older than you are. Well, in my case, a seed was planted in my heart one day to serve in this place when I was 12 years old and learning about federal government during Canada's centennial year. It was literally the year of Canada's 150th before I started my career as a member of Parliament. God's timing is always perfect. Whatever timeline and whatever calling God gives you, well, I just encourage you to realize how important it is for you to represent Him in the public square. Always be alert and sensitive to the Holy Spirit urging you to take a stand against injustice and speak the truth God's truth with boldness and with grace. That's what I was encouraged to do just days into this job, to stand in the House of Commons and speak God's heart. And then having done all to stand, just leave the rest in God's hands. Hosea 14.9 says, Who is wise? Let them realize these things. Who is discerning? Let them understand. The ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them but the rebellious stumble. God calls us to value life from conception to natural death, and so we must take a stand against medical assistance in dying, which is now threatening those with disabilities and mental illness. He placed the family at the foundation of society, and so we must take a stand for parents as the primary caregivers of their children. He speaks to fairness and honesty in how we do business and as individuals and as a nation. And so we must insist on accountable, transparent servanthood by those in power. We're instructed in Scripture to take care of the poor, and He expects us to be good stewards of this creation and whatever blessings we are given. For every challenge our fallen and carnal world finds itself in, and every time the rebellious stumble, 
God gives us the opportunity to be His ambassadors with boldness and grace. I want you to be encouraged by Colossians 3.17. It says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And I'd like to pray 2 Thessalonians 2, 16, 17 over you. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Greetings, my name is Richard Bragdon. I'm the member of parliament for Tobik Mactaquack, and it gives me a great honor to welcome you as the participants in the National Christian Youth Summit. I think it's so great that you're going to be a big part of restoring hope for a brighter future for our great country. And as the old scripture says, weeping indoors for a night, but joy comes in the morning. COVID's provided a long night for Canadians, but I believe hope and joy is on the way. And you're a big part of that. Thank you. Because of Christ in us, we get to do the great exchange. Anxiety for peace, fear for courage, confusion for wisdom, hopelessness for hope. And this hope that Christ grants us is also what we get to hold out to a broken world. God bless you as you pray for the nation of Canada from a place of founded hope in Christ. Hi, I'm Leanne Rood, Member of Parliament for Lambton Kent Middlesex. First, I want to welcome you virtually, of course, to Parliament and to congratulate you on taking time to participate in the National Youth Summit of 2021. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted our lives in profound and unprecedented ways. And now more than ever, it's important to stay hopeful and to remember that even the smallest acts of kindness and care can make a difference in someone's life. Myself and my colleagues are working hard to bring back normalcy, and we need more young people like yourselves involved in today's democracy. Thank you for taking an interest in this great country we get to call home. God has always used young people. Joseph was taken into captivity in Egypt as a young person. He was educated and prepared to take a role in governing Egypt, second only to Pharaoh. God called Joseph to help not only his family, but also Egypt to avoid starvation during a drought. Moses was a baby when he was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. And as a young man, he was outraged at how he saw the people of Israel treated as slaves. God called Moses to lead his people out of slavery. As a young woman, Deborah was called to lead and deliver her people as judge of Israel. And Esther, was a very young woman when she became queen of Persia. God called Esther to save her people from persecution and death. Jesus himself was a young man of 30 when he began his earthly ministry on our behalf. Jesus taught us that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord with all our souls, our hearts, our minds, and strength. He said the second commandment was to love our neighbor. Let me challenge you to accept God's call to love the Lord and love your neighbor as you make a difference in his world. God bless and I hope you enjoy the rest of the summit. Hello everyone, it's Rosemary Falk, Member of Parliament for Battleford Lloydminster in Saskatchewan. I hope that each of you are enriched by your participation in the National Christian Youth Summit. This year's theme, A Hopeful Generation, is a great reminder that even as the pandemic and its fallout shakes the world around us, our faith, and our trust is in God. I pray that you find encouragement, comfort, and hope in Him during this time and always. May you stand firm knowing that He is your refuge and strength. He is a very present help in trouble. God bless and enjoy the summit. Hi, this is Member of Parliament, Damien Kirk. Welcome to this year's National Christian Youth Summit. It was about 14 years ago that I had the opportunity to uh, attend this summit, and I can share firsthand how impactful it was in my life. So may God bless you as you enjoy the speakers, events. Thanks so much. Normally, if you were here in person, you would get to take in all the beautiful sights of the city of Ottawa. Um, but instead, we prepared for you a video tour of the city 
um, so that you can still get a glimpse of what it's like to be in the city of Ottawa, um, starting with the Prime Minister's residence, 24 Sussex, just behind me. Hi, my name is Joycelyn Mosey, and I've been with the National Christian Youth Summit since its founding days in 2005. What began as an idea in the backyard of a few dedicated friends of the British Columbia prayer breakfast has turned into 16 exciting years, seeing God work not only in my own life, but also in the lives of youth across Canada. One of the aims of the summit is for youth to learn how faith and politics intersect. It's for youth to learn why it's important to live out our faith authentically and how that affects our nation. I hope you'll join us now for a session of worship. Member of Parliament Richard Bragdon spoke this morning at the National Prayer Breakfast about the faith and hope that we have in Christ even in these pandemic times. We welcome now Brooke Nichols and her husband, Steve. Oh Lord, my God, when I in so wonder, consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think that God is On the cross, my 
our days. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brooke and Steve, for your ministry. Worship leaders and artists play such an important role as they shepherd the church in song, as they help us to remember the truth and the hope that we have in Christ. It says in Psalm 96 to sing a new song. We have brought to you two stories, one from Ethan and Chelsea Fenton from Nova Scotia and the other from Jake Fretz in Manitoba. They will share with you what is on their heart and why they have written their songs. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Ethan Fenton uh, and with my wife Chelsea, together we make up the duo Ethan and Chelsea Fenton. Uh, we are worship leaders and artists out of Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, which is on the east coast of Canada. As you can see our kind of beautiful backdrop here uh, from our front porch. Um, we are really happy to be tuning in today with you guys uh, and just wanted to bring you a word of encouragement and blessing as you guys meet together. Um, you're about to hear one of our songs, um, Creation Cries Out. Uh, and so I thought it was really fitting just to film this video out here uh, because of the story of where that song came from. Uh, if you've ever been to Cape Breton, uh, hopefully once travel starts and, and, and everything kind of gets back to a place where we can um, see and explore new places, if you get a chance to come, one place that you would be really encouraged to, uh, to visit while you're here is a famous road called the Cabot Trail. And it's a trail that goes all around the Cape Breton Highlands and, and kind of get, brings back these huge memories of, of kind of the grander Scotland and, and, and places that it's compared to, uh, which, is, which is really similar to, to what we have here. Uh, and as you drive around the Cabot Trail, you get these amazing views from mountains cascading into, uh, into the ocean. Uh, and as we were driving around the Cabot Trail one day with some friends that had come to a visit, um, they were in the back seat. My wife uh, was up front with me. And we came across this uh, this curve of a mountain that that was just about to kind of come into view. And as we did, it was just at that perfect time of sunset where the skies were kind of exploding with, you know, a million different colors of orange and red. And, uh, and it was just like everything had come together at that moment to have the best view ever. Uh, and as we came into that uh, to that setting, uh, the guests that were kind of coming along with us behind us said, oh, my gosh, guys, look at that. Isn't that incredible? Uh, isn't it so good that God gives us views like this to look at? Uh, and 
just at that moment, everything kind of paused and I could just feel the father lean down into the car and whisper into my ear, actually, this one, this one's actually for me. And, and that, that little word from the Lord just, just hit me in, in a, such a fresh way of so often we can look at the, the world around us and so often we can look at the beautiful backdrops that, that we're surrounded by and think, yeah, this is, this was definitely for us. This is because, this is because God wanted to make beautiful things for us. And I, and I think a portion of that is true, but I think a really larger portion of it comes from that Bible verse that says, when, when my people don't praise me and don't lift me up, that even the rocks will cry out if you don't. And, and in that moment, God just leaned down and said, you know what, this is actually just creation sending back all the praise to me and all the glory to me and all the worthy this to me. And that this sunset is actually just the sky marking one more day in my powerful reign. And I, I had to pull over the car. I was so overwhelmed by God's goodness and so overwhelmed by kind of my smallness but not, not in a way that made me feel insignificant, but in a way that made me feel a part of something that was so much bigger, something that made me feel like, wow, I, I'm just one small piece in, 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 the, in a whole universe that's lifting up your praise. And so I was just really humbled. And every time we sing the song, every time we worship with it at church, it just brings me into a place where everything else just kind of fades away. And I remember that actually everything is revolving around him that he is worthy of every praise. And if I don't praise him, even the rocks cry out. And every time I see a sunset now, every time I see the waves standing up and bowing down on repeat to him, every time I hear the trees uh, clashing together and clapping out his praise, I remember that even creation cries out his goodness. And then, then that means I must. And so even in these times, even in times where everything is remote and everything is virtual, uh, and it can seem like we're isolated and alone, even in that we are still a part of a much bigger story that above the surface, above the pain, above the chaos, above any of the kind of temporary stuff that we're working through right now, even if it's, you know, I know that there's lots of people around the world that are suffering uh, and, and are in need of Jesus, but, but above that, he is still good. He is still king and he still reigns and he is still good. And, and if we don't praise that out, then, then we know that the earth is going to do it. And so let, let's, as a, as a church and as people of God, join in with the praise that the world, that the, that the universe is, is, is doing itself. And let's join in with that song. We pray that you guys be blessed as you meet together. Uh, and, uh, and we love you guys. to their place and you called them by name and they hung there in silence just to see what you'd say and the wind picked up paces you said it was good and the sun rose that day just to bask in your love and the clouds moved in closer a glimpse of your face and they sing holy is the lord they sing
Hi everyone, my name is Jake Fretz, and in a few moments you're going to be listening to my song, I Want Your Heart. But before you do, I wanted to just encourage you with this one quick thought. Spend more time on your personal relationship with God than you do on your public relations. You're a future leader, maybe a current leader, and your God is using you to bless others around you. If you're doing that and if you are using your skills to encourage others and to lead others and to bring them together and to give them focus and direction, then bless you. Thank you. But I want to share this with you that your best ideas will come when you are alone with Jesus. Your best intentions will come when you are alone with Jesus. You know, this is how the song I Want Your Heart came about. It wasn't that I wrote a song to share with my congregation. It wasn't that I was writing a song to go across Christian radio in Canada, to be playing in South Africa, in Asia, in Europe. I, I had no intentions of that. I, I sure, I hope and dream like any other leader. But this song actually came at a very personal moment with Jesus during a 24-7 prayer event. I was in a room by myself, meeting with God, and I became very aware of God's love for me for you and for everyone in this world. He wants them to know him. So in that very personal moment, that then informed my public ministry. And you know, the phrase, show me your glory, actually comes from Exodus 33, where Moses is on the mountain and he says to God, God, show me your glory. And it says that God's goodness and compassion passes in front of him. It's his heart. And we as leaders often want to jump to those moments, hey, where heaven meets earth and where God talks with man and these amazing things happen. And we get these great phrases like, show me your glory. And we get to share that around. But if you go earlier in that passage in Exodus 33, what you find is that Moses on the daily went out to the tent of meeting and spent time face to face with God. That moment of show me your glory and God passing in front of Moses, that wasn't a one-off. That was actually something that was being culminated and nurtured daily, face-to-face, -face, in a very personal way. And if you want to be a great leader who is going to make a massive difference here in our beautiful country, someone who's going to be able to develop their skills and then use them to honor God and to do miraculous things, then it has to start with you and Him alone. So this is my encouragement to you. Spend more time on your personal relationship with Jesus. And as you get to know him, I guarantee you, he will show you his heart. And as you see his heart is one that is full of love, you're going to want more of it. And you're going to continue to chase that. So enjoy I Want Your Heart and then go chase after him. speaks over me and your spirit seals the promise I've received but your presence Lord unlocks a desperate need I want your heart I want your heart I want your heart show me your glory I want your heart burning inside I want your heart show me your glory I want your heart I want your heart 
I'm a castle and my capstone is secure A hurricane can't come, I know that I am yours But I long to be the tree drinking from your shores I want your heart, I want your heart I want your heart, show me your glory I want your heart burning inside I want your heart, show me your glory I want your heart, I want your heart I want your heart, show me your glory I want your heart burning inside I want your heart, show me your glory I want your heart, I want your heart Yeah! Thank you, Ethan, Chelsea, and Jake, for bringing us such important messages for our time. Let's take some time now to reflect on our personal relationship with Jesus. Perhaps you've joined because you want to make a difference in Canada. Perhaps you want to know and learn from those who have walked before us and who are currently in those places of leadership. One thing that we've heard over and over again throughout the years of the summit is that spending time with God alone is first and foremost. Having an authentic relationship with Him is really where the transformation in our own hearts and then in the lives of others takes place. Ethan and Chelsea Fenton have written a wonderful song called Long Walk Home. I want us to take some time now to consider the prodigal son who took his long walk home with fear of rejection. He didn't know how the father was going to respond to his squandering and his rebellion. But God the Father poured out his love on him and received him in love and in grace. So our walks home are not walks of shame, but in grace and in glory. And wherever and whenever we do feel a distance, remember it is not a long walk in rejection, but it is a run to the Father's arms. It is a run on a runway to Him. I hope that you will be encouraged by the next song and to take some time to listen to God, our Father. When it seems like we're far too gone To ever come back from this When I've never felt more 
thinking you somehow forgot I'm hanging on to what you said I'm holding out for your goodness I'm longing for your sweet embrace Longing for forgiveness because the long walk home is not in shame, it's in glory, it's in glory. The long walk home is not in fear, it's in mercy, it's in mercy. As we consider the things that God speaks to us in our daily lives, the things that we need to turn from, and the things that we need to hear from Him, we will be strengthened to be salt and light in our nation. Our next speaker is Steve Carlton, who is serving faithfully the Indigenous people of Canada in the Arctic Hope Project. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Stephen Carlton, president of the Bill Prankett Evangelistic Association, uh, and uh, live here in Ottawa with my wife, Becky. We've been married now for eight and a half years, coming up on our ninth uh, year this, this summer. We have uh, five beautiful daughters. Uh, I'm 30 years old, and you heard me right. At 30 years old, I have five daughters. It's a crazy old thing. Um, maybe one day, you know, you'll hear the story. But, but here, you know, what we do, at the Bill Franklin Evangelistic Association. Uh, this ministry was started, you know, I think close to 50 years ago. Uh, actually, 55 years ago is when it started. Um, big part of this ministry has been 
uh, ministering to indigenous people, not only here in Canada, uh, but also around the circumpolar Arctic. Uh, for 25 years now, the ministry has been traveling to uh, Arctic Russia and then helping the uh, far, kind of remote, isolated, uh, nomadic Inuit living there. Six, seven years ago, 2014, um, Bill Prankert hired my wife and I to launch a uh, Inuit Youth Suicide Prevention and Leadership Development Program called the Arctic Hope Project. And uh, we started that in a Nunavut community called Cape Dorset, southwest uh, tip of Baffin Island. Uh, we chose this community because there was an 11 year old boy in 2014 that took his life. And, um, and it was the youngest, I guess, on to date. My family comes from another Nunavut community called Pangertung. So I am half uh, Inuk, half Scottish. Um, and really, you know, my, at 14 years old, my life was transformed by the power and love of Jesus. And so, you know, the, the big question for us to talk about, the big thing is, is to talk about hope, right? And where do we get our hope? Um, and that those are really important things for us as, as young people, as, as young future leaders to really uh, consider is where is our hope anchored? Is it anchored in you know, the things around us like, like money or jobs or, or health care or our national leaders or, or even our friends, right? Parents and in those types of relationships. Um, or is our hope and faith anchored in something that, that cannot be shaken? And that is, of course, Jesus Christ himself. Um, the foundational scripture to the Arctic Hope Project uh, is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8. And in this scripture, what we find here is uh, something really amazing where there was this lady named Hannah. She was mother to the prophet Samuel. And her story is really quite awful because, um, I mean, it starts out that she, it's impossible for her to have children. She's married to a man who also has another wife. And that, and that couple, living in the same household, have many, many, many children. So the problem, obviously, was with Hannah. And in Hannah's case, not able to have children, she was filled with shame, filled with anxiety. You know, she would go through bouts where she was unable to, to stop crying. And finally, one day, she reaches out to God. And you read her story there in the first few verses of chapter 1, where she, uh, she gets uh, alone with the Lord. She begins to cry out. You know, she prays. She puts her faith and hope in God. And then she also invites someone, invites a pastor, uh, a prophet, to, to pray with her. And... Um, you read there in, in the, the latter part of, of, uh, of chapter 1 that she actually gave birth to a son, a miracle child, called him Samuel. And this, this Samuel wound up being, you know, the prophet that, um, that we read about who, who anointed King David as king when he was 16 or just a, you know, young teenager. Um, and she says there in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8 in the Meshit's translation, it says that God rekindles burnt out lives with fresh hope. I really want you to be encouraged. I want you to, to understand something that our faith and our hope can be, you know, found in different different areas, but ultimately all of those things will fail. A faith and hope founded in, in the love of Christ himself can never fail your life. We've seen countless young people uh, who, who've been abused, who've had trauma, really awful trauma in their lives in Nunavut who, uh, upon feeling the love and power of God, have been able to forgive people, have been able to, uh, you know, sleep at night, uh, have been able to really find peace in their life that wasn't there before. In my life, I, I was abused at 16 years old by a man who, um, who went to the church that my family was going to. He was a bit of an older brother, mentor type figure, did this awful thing to me, and my hope in God uh, and, and, and my hope in God and to heal the broken parts of me. Um, at 19, I, I forgave this person and, and God really dealt with a lot of stuff in my life to the point now where with what God did in my life when I was a, you know, 19 years old uh, is really carved and paved the way for everything that we're doing in the Arctic. Where we're able to tell young people in Nunavut uh, who have gone through the very things that I've gone through, we're able to tell them that there is hope for their lives. So I want you to be encouraged. I, I want to challenge you to really consider where you put your hope and your faith in. And uh, as future leaders of this nation, of, of wherever you're at, put your faith and your hope in Christ alone. See you guys. 
Well, that's a wrap, folks. Thank you to Stephen Carlton for his message, reminding us to stay hopeful. Thank you to our parliamentarians for their words of encouragement. And thank you to our musicians um, for leading us in times of worship. Now, especially thank you to you guys um, for staying connected. And we want you guys to remain connected so that you can take in our Zoom Q&A with Supreme Court Justice Russell Brown. And he's gonna teach us about what it's like to be a Christian sitting on the Supreme Court of Canada. Um, we are just so grateful for all the support you've given um, us and we would like you to please take care in these times um, and thank you for having joined us at this year's edition of the National Christian Youth Summit. Merci de nous avoir rejoints au Sommet National des Jeunes Chrétiens.